Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I've had a few people ask me about the kinds of products and things I look for when I'm actually actively chasing a storm. And so normally we do our forecast discussion videos on this channel, go through a bunch of data. We're going to do something a bit different today. I'm going to actually take you on a chase with me. Today's February 15th, 2023, and we actually have a slight risk out for parts of Oklahoma and Texas. Let me show you. You can see that slight risk extends from southeast Oklahoma into northern and northeast Texas. We do have all hazards in play today. There is some tornado threat, 5% risk there along the Red River, some damaging winds and large hail, perhaps some significant hail there in that hatched area along the Red River. Storms today are going to, going to fire along a dry line. This is uh, some NAM data, NAM model data from this morning. You can see the pretty uh, well-defined dry line there into central and northern Texas. Storms are going to fire on that late this afternoon and then move into a pretty favorable environment uh, for supercells this evening. Now, I'm not going to go over the full forecast right now. I actually did a forecast discussion this morning on this event. I will put that link up in the corner of your screen there and also down in the description box below so you can check out my thoughts from the morning when I was making a full forecast. So the plan for now is to head down to Marietta, which is right in there, has a good east-west option out of there, and want to stay north of the Red River for now because the storm's going to take a while to get going. If we do need to cross the river, it's not a, a far jaunt to get down toward Gainesville where there is some, uh, there are some other east-west options there. So I think the plan for now, head down toward Marietta. It's about an hour and a half away, and we will reassess uh, when we get down there. Okay, so we've made it to Marietta, and I'm gonna go uh, gas up real quick, uh, grab a quick bathroom break, and then I will talk to you about some things that I look at once I've made it to the target. So we've made it to the target. The first thing I usually look at is the SBC outlook base, just depending on timing. They have issued a new one since we left. No changes to the outlook still. Uh, the forecast looks on track. So then, of course, going to focus mostly on observed data, starting with surface data. This is the latest surface map, and I'm going to check for any boundaries that have developed any surge in moisture, where those boundaries that we talked about in our morning forecast are. And the first thing I notice here is that uh, the 60s dew points are still kind of confined just south of the Red River. We're right in here. This is Durant right here. This is Ardmore. Very warm, very dry air in here. Dew points only in the 40s to uh, mid 50s there in Durant. So the, the best moisture is still well to the south. And we expected it to be a little bit slow to get here, uh, but still we expected it to be at the Red River uh, sometime around now. And so it's doing okay. Uh, with the full sunshine, we've seen probably a little bit of mixing as well. We're not seeing that really robust moisture uh, make it up here. Only about 60 dew point even right there near DFW, which is right in there. So that's a little bit concerning, but nothing too major yet. Uh, then we're going to take a look at satellite. I, I really heavily look at the satellite, and it looks like we do have an, a cumulus field that has developed with some agitation going right here in northwest Texas. Looks to be kind of right ahead of the dry line there. Some kind of semblance of surface low right in here. Uh, dry line looks to be basically right in this vicinity right here, 40s dew points here, 50s here. So they're firing right ahead of the dry line, right ahead of the surface low. So kind of right on target as far as the track goes, a little bit farther west maybe than expected. So we may have to adjust here a little bit. We are right in here. So we could sit here for a little bit, let these storms percolate, uh, or we could cross the river, get a little bit out to the west. I don't think there's we're in any rush right now. Uh, because we're still uh, pretty early. It's only 3.30 p.m., uh, so I'm not too concerned yet uh, about our position. Then, of course, I'd be lying if I said I didn't check the HER. I usually check it for consistency's sake. Now, I don't you know, make decisions off what the HER shows, but I do look at it just to see if it's being consistent or if, or if it's throwing any curveballs in there. And this is the latest HER right now, and you can see pretty much on target. It de developed storms out there in northwest Texas. Uh, moves them off toward the east, and they get uh, fairly robust 
as they get into Oklahoma there, uh, particularly up near on, on the I-40 corridor and there in southeast Oklahoma as well. So that's something to note, although not going to put too much meat behind that uh, solution yet. We're going to check the radar here a little bit because we have storms that are firing at this point. So let's check in with those. We do see some blips there on radar just to the south uh, of the Wichita Falls area. Wichita Falls you see is right there. Multiple blips going up where that agitated cumulus field was. So that's going to be, these are going to be our storms. We are right in here. So we are, oh, about, about 85 miles or so out from those storms. And again, they're going to need a lot of time we may want to shift a little bit west eventually, but uh, I think we can sit here, kind of monitor some things uh, and wait to really pounce until these storms get into the better moisture that is making its way up. I also like to look at soundings, any midday soundings that some of the nearby offices might do on severe weather days. Thankfully today we have uh, some of those to look at. Oftentimes we won't, but today the threat is high enough that they, these offices did release balloons at 18Z. Here's the Fort Worth one. You can see a pretty pronounced cap in place still there. So those storms off to the west are going to take some time to percolate. Until that cap erodes, we're not really going to see that substantial severe weather threat uh, increase. Also like to look at mesoanalysis, a few different products uh, here. I'll kind of look at an assortment of things. Here's the 500 millibar pattern. You can see the nose of that 500 millibar jet moving in. Right on the nose of that is where those storms are firing. And as we continue to see this trough move in, we'll see the cap uh, erode a little bit over the next few hours. Mixed layer cape um, kind of just depends on the setup, what I'm looking for. Uh, mixed layer cape here, this one, you can see where that northern edge of the moisture is. Those storms are firing just on the northwest edge of that cape axis there. Zero to three kilometer cape and surface vorticity. Uh, we've talked about the uh, benefits of z three cape and vorticity. I like to see, you know, out a couple hours, see if we have any bullseyes developing. It looks like we do right there along the Red River in about two to four hours, co-located with some surface vorticity. So we'll have to keep that in mind uh, for any storms that are down there. And it looks like the SPC has now issued a mesoscale discussion for our area about 20, 25 minutes ago. It's about 3.42 p.m. right now. They say severe thunderstorm potential will gradually increase over the next few hours with weather watch possible in the next hour or two where truly surface-based storms may develop mainly from the red river vicinity southward a tornado or two will also be possible so interesting development there with this md they're kind of highlighting the area from the red river southward which is basically on par with our thinking we're thinking that the best moisture is going to be a little bit farther south uh, so uh, those storms moving in, uh, forming in northwest Texas right now are going to have to move into that better moisture. And over the next few hours, as they get closer to the Red River, uh, may have a, an all-hazards threat. I also like to get outside and actually use my eyes. Your eyes become a, a really important tool once you get in chase mode. And feel the air, look to see if there are any uh, you know, areas of potential development going up around us. Right now, not seeing any. Of course, we're still well to the north of that moisture surge. But I like to at least get out and kind of feel the air and get a feel for the uh, environment uh, at the present time. So those are kind of the things I look for uh, after I get to the target. And I'm really not doing any model analysis at this point other than occasionally glancing at the HER and looking if it's being consistent. I'm looking at the observed data now and especially using my eyes, feeling the environment, which way the wind's blowing. Um, where are the cumulus uh, fields popping up? I think the plan for now is going to be just to sit here for a little bit longer. I'm going to monitor some uh, surface data, see if those 60s continue, 60s dew points continue to push up and uh, kind of re reassess from there because those storms are going to need a, a lot of time to get going. We're not in, a, in bad shape at all. Can easily shoot west out of uh, here on Highway 32. All right, it's 3.50 p.m. now, and the SPC just put out a severe thunderstorm watch. You can see the yellow box there. Our location is that blue bullseye right there in Marietta. Those are the storms that are firing right now to the Wichita, in the Wichita Falls area in south. They're not even in the watch box yet. So I like our position right here. I think I'm going to sit here, continue to sit here for a while uh, until we see something uh, that makes us bite. So still in Marietta, just kind of taking stock of the environment right now. The winds are out of the south. I don't know if you can see behind me, there's a flagpole at the gas station across the street. Uh, it's blowing pretty much due southerly, maybe just south southeasterly. So that's a good sign right now. Winds are decently strong, decently strong surface flow, which is a good sign. So just gonna wait. Can't really see the storms off to uh, the west. Uh, they'd be back in here uh, somewhere. So again, we're just gonna wait here, right in the middle of the watch box. Uh, I think we're in a perfect spot uh, as those storms move into the better moisture here soon. 
So as storms are firing, I like to put up the double box. On the left is reflectivity. On the right, I have echo tops. Just to kind of see where the uh, most robust updrafts are. And you can see right here, there's kind of our highest updraft right now, just to the southeast of Archer City, uh, which is this storm right over here. It does have 60 dBZ in it. So watching that area, also uh, checking satellite here and there to compare what we're seeing. Um, I like to zoom in there on the localized sector. Co College of DuPage has a really good satellite uh, page for those localized sectors. You can see some cloud streets out in here to the east of these storms. That indicates low level stability. So hopefully that will erode in a little bit because that is the environment these storms are moving into. But you can see those storms are really blowing up there, especially that one near Archer City that we talked about. That's definitely the most robust updraft. Watching that area for sure, uh, but we have multiple updrafts along this dry line here that we need to watch over the next few hours. So you'll notice those storms are kind of right in here right now. Dew point at Wichita Falls is 49. They're gonna have to move into this better moisture here. 56 dew point at that particular station, Ardmore is 52. Hopefully those dew points will increase as that moisture surges northward ahead of the surface low. So again, it's gonna take a couple hours for these to really get going, but it's nice to already see some storm development along the dry line. So it's about 4.15 p.m. and looking off to the west, you can actually see the anvil from those developing storms near Archer City. Uh, it's a little hazy out, so you can't really see the whole thing, but you can definitely see the anvil and a little bit of cumulus push uh, kind of right in there. Just a nice little push in there. So these definitely are maturing pretty quickly in this environment. So taking a look now at the Fort Worth 21Z sounding, and you can definitely see the cap has eroded quite a bit. Take a look down here. That cap has definitely eroded a lot. Dew point going up 73 over 61 now. The moist layer is deepening somewhat. Uh, and that hodograph looks pretty favorable for supercells. Here's that storm we were looking at. It's about 440 right now. The anvil is, is, has really fanned out overhead, uh, well ahead of the storms, but the main storm's still well back there uh, in Texas. So liking what I'm seeing right now, uh, again, staying put here in Marietta for, for the time being. So we now have a severe thunderstorm warning. It's about 5.15 p.m. for one of those trailing storms uh, just east of Wichita Falls. Uh, I have a, a sneaking suspicion it's gonna be this guy right here if I zoom in a little bit. It's gonna be that crisp edge that you see, uh, kind of right in there. It's a little tough to tell, uh, but I believe that is our severe storm. Uh, still don't wanna move anywhere right now. I think we're in a good position. Uh, again, these still need time, so uh, I like the position I'm in right now. I'm gonna sit here, watch this storm. It has some hail in it, uh, definitely uh, perking up on satellite, definitely the tallest echo tops in that area right now. So just gonna stay here. Might start inching west a little bit if it starts getting its act together, but still, I think it's a little bit farther away, a little bit uh, of time needed for it to get its act together fully. So we're losing a little bit of light on the visible satellite, but you can see, Right there is our severe storm. Right in there, you can see it's the most robust looking uh, cumulus or cumulonimbus there. Uh, so that definitely looks like it's gonna be the one to take off. There are other storms around and I'm watching, but that area for sure has the most robust look to it right now. All right, it's 5.41 p.m. right now. And given that the storms are going to move off to my north a little bit, I think I'm gonna reposition a little bit to the north. I'm gonna go head back up toward Ardmore. It's only about 10 to 15 minutes or so to my north, but that'll put me in good position, give us uh, some good road options east and west if we need. Uh, as I think once these storms reach I-35, they're gonna uh, see an uptick in updraft strength as uh, they really tap into that instability that's, that's surging northward. So I'm gonna head north and reposition a little bit. Still have a good view of these storms from here, but just wanna get a little bit better uh, position on these storms as they move a little bit off to my uh, north. Uh, in Northwest at the moment. I'm just south of Ardmore, Oklahoma now. It's just before 6 p.m. You can see the storm behind me. Doesn't look all that great right now, but as I said, it's probably gonna take a little bit of time until it gets to I-35, which is just in front of me here, to actually perk up. So I'm gonna give it some time. It's still high base, still in the, in the little bit worse moisture, but I think in the next hour or so, we'll start to see an uptick in activity and uh, intensity with these storms. And so I'm gonna sit right here, just south of Ardmore. We've got Highway 70 right there that is a good uh, east option if we need. So we're in a good spot here if this storm perks up. It's about 6.11 right now, and storms are really just taking their sweet time. Uh, this storm right in front of me, just looking pretty bad, and looks like it's about to overtake me here. 
and they're moving off to the northeast pretty quickly. Uh, there's not really much firing uh, farther south. You can see there's just not much down there. So this looks like it's going to be the main show. Unfortunately, this, these look a little bit high base, a little bit elevated still. They're just north of the best moisture, north and west of the best moisture. So hopefully that, that moisture continues to surge northward. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is reposition. I'm right there at the blue bullseye right now. I'm going to reposition somewhere up in here, maybe to Tishomingo, uh, just to try to stay out ahead of these, give them some time so we don't get stuck behind uh, these storms. Hopefully, as that low-level jet picks up a little bit and that moisture continues to flow northward, that we'll see these storms perk up a little bit, because uh, let me give you a view right now of the storm that's right in front of me, uh, just south of Ardmore, and you can see very high-based, uh, maybe some attempted structure, a little bit of lightning going on uh, with the rain shaft there, just not a whole lot going on with this particular storm. Uh, at the moment. All right, guys, we're pulling out of the northeast side of Ardmore, Oklahoma right now, heading in the general direction of the town of Dixon. Uh, these storms are just not doing anything right now at all. They're really struggling at the moment. There's some new cores starting to go up behind that storm we were watching just a little bit ago. Uh, there's been some lightning with these, but just nothing uh, intense so far. So I'm just trying to get out east to try to give these storms as much time as possible. And right now, as far as things I'm looking for, I'm just looking at radar when I can and trying to get a visual whenever I can. Visible satellite's useless right about now. Uh, the surface data, not gonna change appreciably I'll keep checking those dew points on the Oklahoma Mesonet or the surface maps here and there. But at, at this point, now that we're on active storms, uh, it's time to use, use your eyes and use your knowledge of meteorology and severe storm behaviors uh, to make the best decisions. All right, I'm here in Dixon right now, and these storms that I was on, they're just not doing anything. The storms to the west, though, are kind of perking up a little bit. We'll zoom in here just a tad. They are seeming to get a little bit more robust. Now, farther to the farther north you go, the worse the instability is and the worse the moisture is. So hopefully these storms down to the south here, west of Loco, are going to take off. Uh, I think what I might do if those storms start perking up, might just head back to I-35 uh, and then just sprint north to Davis or Winniewood or uh, up 177. Uh, that I'm just I'm just right at the intersection here uh, of 177 north that goes toward sulfur I might take that north as well Just want to give these storms time to percolate as it looks like they are finally starting to ramp up here All right at 721. I actually ended up going up 177 to sulfur and I am just on the west side of town right now. Storms are really starting to pick up in intensity. There's one storm just to my west on the west side of Davis uh, that I'm watching. Lightning has definitely picked up in frequency. Uh, but those storms to the west are actually along the cold front. The cold front has surged uh, off toward the southeast a little bit, and the storms are firing up on that. I think, I don't know if the dry line circulation was enough to really sustain uh, robust storms as it started to retreat in the late afternoon, but this cold front coming through is helping to initiate more storms and intensify those storms as they move, out, move off to the east. Not really showing any supercellular characteristics. You can see the velocity, maybe some weak rotational signatures within these storms, but nothing really supercellular right now. Uh, and so I'm just gonna monitor these uh, hopefully as they approach the I-35 corridor, they will start to ramp up and, and start to attain some rotation. All right, watching this uh, storm that is isolated out ahead of the line west of Davis. It's moving pretty slowly. Has started to develop some sort of mesocyclone here. So this does appear to be a supercell out ahead of that line along the cold front. So we're going to continue to watch this storm. It's putting out some pretty impressive lightning. Seen some, uh, some positive bolts uh, so far. Uh, so this is looks like the most intense storm for now. Going to keep uh, just east of it. Chasing may get a little bit difficult here. The road network it gets a little bit tricky as we continue to the if we continue to the east of Sulphur. So going to watch this storm. It's moving pretty slowly and monitor it for any signs of mischief. All right, guys, uh, moving west now. Just saw the base of this storm, this isolated storm ahead of the line, and it was, looked pretty interesting there. We can see it in the lightning. I'm gonna reposition here just up the road to the west a little bit. Uh, it's moving off toward the northeast, so we're going to have to go back the way we came to uh, try to intercept it uh, once again. I just kind of want to get a better view. It's moving pretty slowly, definitely a right-moving supercell uh, with a uh, some strong mid-level rotation on radar. Lots of positive CGs. Uh, that usually means a storm is ramping up when you see a lot of positive uh, lightning bolts like that. I am going to stop right here.
right storm is now severe uh, moving just to our northeast it's hard to get a view uh, but I can see the base there's definitely inflow uh, feeding into it out of the southeast uh, which is a good sign but I think it's still a little bit elevated uh, probably producing some hail at this point tornado threat might be a little bit limited uh, because of how elevated it, it uh, appears to be. All right, I think I'm going to reposition, uh, get back ahead of it as it is moving off to the northeast pretty quickly. Uh, so uh, I just want to get ahead of it uh, when it's not doing anything. watching this supercell, we are just north of Sulphur on Highway 177. The lighting in this thing has gone absolutely nuts. Uh, I've got some footage in here for you of that. Uh, watching the actual base of the supercell, uh, it looks like it has some scuddy fingers, some shelf cloud looking elements. Hard to say in the light, in the uh, lack of light here, but uh, definitely is low, uh, but probably a little bit elevated. Um, but uh, cool super supercell nonetheless, especially for February standards. Definitely on the chillier side out here. Uh, there's still some inflow, but it's definitely gotten a little colder out here. Uh, so I have a pretty sneaking suspicion that this uh, storm is elevated, but looks pretty nonetheless, has some structure to it. The lighting has been pretty awesome. Some sort of wall cloud possibly there. Um, there is some mid-level rotation. There has been for quite a while with this storm.
just south of the hook echo of this storm. It's about 8.13 p.m. Uh, just looks a little bit shelfy to me, a little outflow dominant. Uh, there's not a whole lot of inflow at this location, um, but we found a nice paved road and conti continue to follow it, but it's definitely got some increasing rotation. It just looks a little shelfy to me. All right, it's about 8.23 p.m. I'm near Fitzhugh, Oklahoma. Uh, there looks to be some laminar features on this storm. Hard to tell from the camera here. Uh, so it looks like it's a, dealing with a little bit of convective inhibition. There's a lot of low features uh, with this storm. It's had some pretty strong rotation for a while now. So I'm going to keep watching it, uh, see if it does anything. Uh, but it looks good. Northeast toward Ada. Our storm is tornado worn now. Uh, looks a little outflow dominant. The hook echo is more of a dog leg. Uh, looks a little shelfy. It's had some lowerings at times. I'm just south of the hook right now. I'm paralleling it. It's moving northeast. I am heading toward Ada and uh, we're, we're in great position for this storm. All right guys, it's 8.48 p.m. We're calling the chase. We're here in Ada. Followed the, that storm that eventually went tornado warned uh, for quite a while. It had some interesting features to it. it. Looked a little laminar, as we said, because probably dealing with a little bit of conductive inhibition. You could just tell it was a little elevated, a little disorganized at times. The, the hook echo on radar was kind of a dog leg for most of the life cycle. So, calling the chase here, it's a, a futile effort to get back out in front of it. Uh, the roads start getting, the terrain starts getting worse. The streets are flooding here and ate up a little bit. So. Calling the chase here in Ada. Overall, pretty successful chase for February. Definitely was happy to get on a Tornadic Supercell. Uh, didn't really expect much out of today, but we got a pretty nice Supercell after dark, got some great lightning. Uh, so I'm ha overall happy with the day, happy with the forecast. Uh, storms just took a little bit longer than we thought to get going. Uh, they needed that extra uh, oomph from the cold front to really get going, but happy with the chase. We're gonna wrap things up here in Ada, and then uh, once uh, the, this uh, line passes through, uh, gonna make the trek back to Norman. That's gonna wrap things up everybody made it back to norman safe and sound all in all a fun chase uh, for february standards especially definitely exceeded expectations saw a nice supercell there with lots of good lightning some structure on and tried to produce a tornado there of, at, at times uh, but that's pretty much what i go through on a chase by chase basis more focus on the observations uh, the surface obs the satellite etc and then once the storm's actually fire and you're on a storm it's really all about using your eyes and uh, to, to using your knowledge of meteorology uh, to figure out uh, if you're on the best storm and where to position yourself uh, with that particular storm. So that's going to do it. Hope you guys like this video. If you do, let me know in the comments below. Um, if you guys liked it, we might do some of these, some more of these in the future, maybe on some more robust or more significant days. Uh, but this was a nice little warm up, a little preseason chase uh, to get the blood flowing and get the rust off uh, here in Oklahoma. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.